Welcome back to the gun channel. Today's video is going to be about the SIG P320 X5 Legion. And specifically, we're gonna be going over um, having put over a thousand rounds through it, taking it through multiple classes, the reason for purchasing the red dots versus irons, and this gun's place amongst other guns and uses, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, what Jessica's experience has been so far as a new shooter, having, uh, having been the one to put most of the rounds through it and taking it through the classes. Thanks for yeah. finally joining us here on the Gun Channel. It's been, been long overdue. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice yeah. to be here. Some of you may have already seen Jess. She was on the uh, Gun Channel most recently on a defensive pistol class over at Force IMI. So if you haven't seen that video after this one, you can check that one out. So why did you buy this gun? You told me to. I like it. <laughs> sort of. Uh, the reason I bought this gun was because I had shot your 380 before. It didn't ever feel like I got a great grip on it. And then as soon as I picked this up, it was like, oh. Just felt good. Oh. Mm -hmm. All the controls are, basically it's like, what did I say the other day? It was like an F-16, a Harley Buell, and a Tesla had a three-way. And then they made a baby. Oh, Hermione Granger was watching. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> And they had a three-way and this came out. So it's it's kind of got that lean into the wind, Harley Buell style thing, but the technology is so good in it, like a Tesla. And it's sort of like, you know, all these other guns were like trying to be as small as possible, conceal carry, how small of a package can we be and still get as many rounds as possible. And then Sig is like, fuck it. We're gonna make the gun as big as we want and we're gonna make it beautiful and we're gonna make it heavy and it's gonna shoot great and we don't give a fuck about being small. We mm -hmm. don't give a shit about any of that stuff and whatever the rounds are. I love are, the, the people that we meet on the range and they find out this is my first weapon and they're like, that's what you got for your first weapon. Mm -hmm. I just think it's something more women should consider. Yeah, the controls are, you grab it and everything, it's just made for your hand. All the controls are big, all the buttons are sticking out. Um, it everything's slides easy great, to grab. it's really, smooth yeah the, the the slide is easy to actuate and move and that grip right there what is that called again tang or the beaver tail yeah mm -hmm. it's especially from the holster it is perfect mm -hmm. um whenever i use any other kind of firearm i'm like oh i miss mm -hmm. i miss that because it's it's really effective for getting a good just purchase. Love it. Yeah. I will say the recoil, talking about the recoil, um, recoil to talk about it without referencing it to something else is kind of useless um, sometimes in reviews. But like a gun like this that has a little more access, um, which would be, or it's similar to like a most polymer, polymer frame guns like Glocks, the, um, I think the barrel is a little bit down closer to the hand, where this one mm. sort of tends, tends a little higher. Yeah. But because of all the technology, they got the spring in there that you can change out to different tensions and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, the lightening of the, um, the slide and things like that. The recoil, <clears throat> the gun moves, but I don't think, for me personally, I don't think it's about not letting the gun move. The gun is going to move, but having that good timing to be able to do follow-up shots as mm -hmm. the gun is moving in your hand and be able to time it and control the recoil. Because of everything else the gun has going on, it's not just this one number of how how close the bore or the, the height of the barrel is over your hand. There's other stuff going on with it um, that people that uh, are much wiser than me about it, talking about lightening the slide and the spring and how this tang works as it comes up and how the angle of this grip and whatnot works. But overall, it's just a different timing. So when I pick this up, I'm like, it moves around. I'm like, man, this thing seems to be recoiling a lot, but it's just more like it's a different- balance though. It's more like a timing thing. Almost like if you were to have a dance partner and you used to one dance partner and you dance all the time, yeah. and you get a new dance partner, it's like you just gotta find the new timing to it. Yeah. And then, I mean, at that course, you were you were dumping some ammo without- Yeah, that was expensive. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> but you were dumping ammo and hitting target, doing intuitive shooting and just follow-up shots and, it, it was gorgeous and that extra weight like you mentioned earlier is oh, a huge asset there is a weight that's actually added in the back of this and there's that what other metal it's infused what? i can't remember the name of the metal yes yeah, an infused polymer slash metal infused um frame and there's actually another weight in the back there that actually puts the weight to make it uh, to balance it out for uh, before mentioned the mag is hidden in there and i understand when i looked it up as why is the mag flush there because i feel uncomfortable without being able to usually when i insert my mags in, in the gun i'll do a tug to make sure it's seated and these flush mags here and that happened a couple times to me mm -hmm. where they weren't they weren't really popped in there 
From what I understand, it's because some competitions you go to, the mag oh. can be extended beyond the grip. Okay. Um, and I know this could be, the mag well can be removed if you wanted to, it's not a permanent uh, thing, mm -hmm. and so that's an option, but um, for just fun shooting, who gives a shit? Um, competitions, that might be something you need. Uh, for mm -hmm. self-defense, it's probably fine, but it, I know when you were training, it did that, yeah, and not I'm, being able to I'm new, it. so I need to get more reps with just changing the mag without looking anyway, so. But if you get these 21 rounders, really this nice. is just amazing. It's like the best of both worlds. You get the mm -hmm. huge mag well, slide right in. You get um, that sense of control and the feeling like I can give that a tug and I can do a check and I know that this weapon's ready to go. The mag's not gonna fall out. And they do have, when you get them, they have like, they're really cool. They're like Legion mags. So. That's one thing I appreciate as far as talking about the expense of the mags. I think it's like over around 50 bucks, 55 bucks or something for a 21 rounder at the time mm -hmm. that I purchased it from SIG. Yeah. Now, I don't, of course I don't want to spend $50 on a mag, but I don't mind spending money on a mag as long as it's really high quality and those are that. Now, I, um, mm -hmm. this um, weapon came with a couple of mags and the original m and mags are fantastic. And I couldn't find them when I went to order uh, some additional mags because again, in the middle of COVID, everything got weird. So I ordered some off-brand mags and they're like 10 bucks a piece, but I can't use them There's three magazines and they're just shit. Uh, they they're just they just fall apart and they just don't work right. So I would prefer to pay top dollar for mags that I know are gonna work every time because it's not like I need, I don't need uh, 10 mags that don't work. I need mm -hmm. five that do. So what was your user experience? Um, I know we got a holster from you. This is Red River Holster, good holster. Um, their website is abysmal, but uh, their products are great. So if you are looking for a holster for this gun, I would I would refer and you they probably. they have good customer service. Yeah. yeah, it's a local business, family owned, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend that. So that's something to check out. If that, you're not into this one, then I would recommend Dara Holster. Mm -hmm. um, they've been a great supporter of the channel and they make good stuff too, so. Yeah, it's um, heavy, but that's part of what makes it great. Mm -hmm. And I think that's maybe a misconception for a lot of women. Mm -hmm. It was my misconception that that would be a worse thing, but it actually gives you more control. Thought it would be a great first gun for you. I mean, it was sort of at the beginning of the pandemic, and so there were some um, different mm -hmm. options, of availability of different kinds of guns. And I had uh, a month or two before, I picked up this particular M&P 9. I'm getting, um, approaching just under $1,000, getting this gun up and running the way I liked it. And this thing was coming out of the box without the light and the optic on it was just loaded down with features. Yeah, you didn't like, have to do anything to it. It was like 800 bucks, come with a trigger and flat face and optics ready cut, amazing sights, lightning cuts on the slide, um, beautiful rail, beautiful grip, beautifully weighted. Um, and I, it just felt so good in the hands um, and it's sort of positioned as a competition gun, but it was like, man, this thing just feels so freaking good. It's for 800 bucks and it was literally pimped out right out of the, out of the gate. So it felt like a no-brainer. Because um, I wasn't interested in mm -hmm. like having to do anything to it. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be ready to go. Right, and so that brings in a topic of the X5 Legion, who's it for? Um, you know, it, it's sort of advertised as a competition gun, but it doesn't have to be just that. What it isn't is it is not a concealed carry gun. Uh, not that you couldn't do it, but uh, definitely not ideal. I mean, here's, not on person. Here's your holster. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. You know, you could hurt, you could 100% do it. That's not what I'm saying, but it's 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 weighs 3,000 pounds, and uh, and that, that you can still carry with it. So, but no, as far as a first shooter, awesome. What's funny about it is the same features that make it amazing for uh, a first-time gun make it amazing for somebody who's been shooting for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, the way it feels in the hand, the recoil, things like that, makes it super fun to shoot at the range which means that the more rounds you're actually willing to shoot, the better you're gonna right. be at the gun, the better you're gonna be yeah. at using it for a self-defense situation. Speaking yeah. of which, so you bought it for what reason uh, as far as self-defense wise? Like, So the reason I purchased um, this is because I, I didn't have any firearms at all. So um, I live with my son and um, we live in a, a good neighborhood, but mm -hmm. um, this year is really weird. And so I felt like I needed to be able to defend myself if necessary and not have to depend on anyone else or the police or anything like that if things got complicated. And so I purchased it for my home and we talk a lot about do, you get, do I get a shotgun or do mm -hmm. I get something else? And um, I think this is 
the weapon that sort of can fit a lot of different boxes. Mm -hmm. So, um, or when I'm I'm on the road for work, I can carry this. I'm not going to carry a shotgun. Yeah, I mean, it takes you know why this gun versus another gun, and um, and I help guide you as far as whatever experience that I had was you have a small house, a lot of tight corners, stuff like that. Um, you automatically felt more comfortable using a pistol. It made more mm -hmm. sense to you. So. It would be so hard to use mm -hmm. a rifle in my house. It is, I have like 900 square feet mm -hmm. of awesome, but still, that's very small. And so, you know, back to the firearm, like it's how she set it up. It's got this amazing light on it. It is, uh, what is it, the Surefire, mm -hmm. I forget the model, X300? Yep. Ultra. Ultra. So I'm sure we have a bunch of B-roll sliding over this, but the the light on it is perfect for um, for that indoor dark nighttime stuff. She's got a giant red dot on it, um, which makes it like playing a video game at the range. It's super fun. Is this, uh, does this bother you or is this too close? Am I in your personal space here, Jess? Um, Michael? All gone with the boom booms. And it co-witnesses with the sights that are already on it. So if that's ever down, no big deal. In fact, when she took her, um, your class, he, the instructor turned that red dot right off and told you to run the sights and you're doing intuitive shooting and occasionally use the sights. Yeah, it was mostly intuitive shooting. And um, I actually like the iron sights on this. Mm -hmm. um, they're really easy to see. And I also like the red dot. So it's not like I think one or the other is better, but I'm, I'm so new to it. I don't really feel like I can have an opinion. You know, my thought, I'll start off, my thoughts between red dot and iron sights is there's three things to it. Uh, they they both work. Um, they both can be quick as, as, as many, just use a shit ton of reps and shoot it a lot and practice with it a lot and you get good with either one. But now being introduced to the concept of point shooting, intuitive mm -hmm. shooting, through the courses we've taken at IMI, that within that seven yards or less range, it's intuitive shooting, right. burst of five, Mm -hmm. You know, three to five shots uh, into a compact, effective range. Just in this space right there, you're not using sights at all. It doesn't matter which one. Yeah. And then there's a, uh, from my, there, I think there's a slight advantage possibly to a red dot over at a longer range on a pistol. Right. So then it's like, yeah. well, okay. Well, if I'm just going to be intuitive shooting at seven yards or less uh, in that situation, and then at longer ranges, if I do want to maybe deal with an active shooter or just have fun with it, blinking the red dot makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, the sights on this, were so good. I'm like, whoa, um, these are really good sights. So I, I think I'm sort of torn between a red dot and, and iron sights myself. And I was going to put a red dot on this, but I don't know if I'm going to anymore because I have a red dot on my carry gun and, and I'm kind of mixed on that. If as well. I were to go back and never have gotten a red dot, I would be perfectly fine. Yeah. Well, if you had to do it over again, do you think you'd buy the red dot? Probably not. Probably not. Um, and not because I don't think it's great, but because I know I purchased this as a um, defensive weapon. Mm -hmm. And there's no way you have time to use a red dot if you're within five mm -hmm. to 10 yards right. of someone. That's what I, I love, the, the, the methodology of that course helped me understand more real world applications. Um, that being said, I think this could be really cool later if I do continue to progress and want to do other kinds of things with it, then I just have it. Cool. So, so but going, I guess get back to the gun and get lost in philosophy because that's sort of a fun part of shooting. I guess in short, I would say having multiple guns, since you pimp this one out and it's such a sweet shooter and it's so great and it's got really high round count, it's got a light on it and the optics on it. Um, this actually occupies a really big space in the home defense. You purchased it, you've had it, you've got a thousand rounds through it. Look, reliability? Have you ever had a malfunction? No. Mm -hmm. We ran some shit ammo through it too. Yeah. Sure who would you recommend it for and who would you not recommend it for? Based on my experience at the range, mm -hmm. most dudes are like, oh, I would want that. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think more women should consider it, especially if they have, um, you know, a decent sized grip like I do. Mm -hmm. um, I think smaller women might have a really hard time with it, but I'm 5'8", I've got decent sized hands, I'm athletic, mm -hmm. so I can handle it. This would be a really great option because like you said, if I can shoot it more and feel more comfortable with it, I'm gonna practice more with it. And that is yep. the most important thing. So I don't ever wanna practice with my 380. I don't mm -hmm. like it. This I'm gonna get efficient at because I'm gonna practice with it. And I can monkey bash you with it. You can bash me like a monkey <laughs> with this fire. It's like, I mean, it's pretty heavy. I won't do that. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Nine millimeter discussion, right? Would you rather be shot by a nine millimeter or hit over the head with a SIG P320? Um, I would say recommend or not recommend. I would definitely think it was a great choice for you. Um, after me running it, I sort of wish I, if I would have known about this gun before I, I went with my old <sighs> amateur. We're in the studio here recording. No big deal. Go ahead and leave your phone on. So 100% reliable, fantastic gun for sport, uh, home defense, first time shooters, long time shooters. So they obviously knocked it out of the park on this one. And um, I've been trying really hard not to buy one myself because <laughs> I, or steal mine or steal yours. So, and what's your gun's name? This is Joan, Joan of Arc. That well, matches your tattoo. It matches my tattoo. Oh, nice. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap this up. We're at the Gun Channel. Thank you so much for uh, stopping by, Miss Jess. And uh, the biggest supporter of this video today is definitely EvokeStudio.io. <laughs> Jessica and I are both traveling uh, photographers, and we have a small production company as well and we travel all over the country doing what we love with and Joan with Joan wherever it's legal <laughs> yes yeah if you need uh, any photography needs or anything like that or interested in our other work you can check us uh, our website out at evokestudio.io or also all, all over social media at evokestudio.io and thanks again we'll see you soon